Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the brand new course on Microsoft Fabric with Real World Project. And if you're someone preparing for Microsoft TP600 exam, Microsoft Fabric Analytics Engineer, then this course is for you. And in this video, we will quickly look at a brief introduction to Microsoft Fabric. And we'll also look at the roadmap and code structure and uh, also the data set that we'll be using across the course which is COVID-19 data set. And a brief introduction about me. This is uh, Sheikh Mohammed, and I'm an Azure Solutions Architect and Fabric Analytics Engineer. And I have close to 15 plus years of work experience. And uh, very recently I've completed my Fabric Analytics Engineer certification. So I just wanted to give you the tips and tricks to pass the exam and also to showcase and demonstrate with the real world open data set which is COVID-19 data set. So let's kickstart the course. So let's quickly look at the overview of DP600 Fabric Analytics Engineer Certification Exam. As a candidate for this certification, you should have subject matter expertise in designing, creating and deploying enterprise scale data analytics solutions. And your responsibilities for this role include transforming data into reusable analytics assets by using Microsoft Fabric components such as lake houses, data warehouses, notebooks, data flows, data pipelines, semantic models and reports. So let's look at the course goals quickly. So you will master data ingestion, data engineering and semantic modeling concepts in Microsoft Fabric. And we will prepare you for the DP600 certification exam with all the required information and we will also go through the study guide. And as and when, when we learn the concepts, we will also apply the learned concepts in a real world project using the Azure Open Dataset which is COVID-19 dataset. Let's look at the skills measured for the certification exam. So planning, implementing and managing a solution for data analytics would be 10 to 15 percent and then preparing and serving data would be the most part you know major chunk goes to preparing and serving your data which is 40 to 45 percent and implementing and managing semantic models would be 20 to 25 percent and then the exploration and analyzing the data would be 20 to 25 percent that's how the split is for the certification exam you should focus on uh, planning, implementing, and managing a solution, which is like 10 to 15 percent in the overall chunk. And the most part would be the preparing and serving data, as I mentioned. We need to focus a lot there, uh, which covers 40 to 45 percent um, skills. And code structure and modules. So, the demonstration in Fabric app with the real world data set, as I mentioned, we will be taking the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control COVID 19 data set. Uh, is included in every module as you can see here the module one we will cover planning implementing and managing a DA solution module two would be preparing and serving the data which should be the most part as I mentioned 40 to 45 percent we will focus a lot there uh, with the COVID-19 data set and then we will uh, try and implement and manage the semantic models and finally we will try and explore and analyze the data the COVID-19 data further and let's look at the roadmap. So we will be doing a 10 part video series and we'll also have a Google Classroom community so that you can follow along and uh, whatever resources that I need to share with you, I'll be posting in Google Classroom. So I'll be sharing the link in the description as well. So you can raise a request to join the community and uh, you can start accessing the notebooks or whatever resources or arti artifacts that we'll be creating as a part of this course will be posted there so you can access it easily there in the google classroom so the video one which we are right now uh, the course introduction and we'll also quickly cover the covid 19 data set overview as well and as a part of video two we will plan implement and manage a da environment so we will be looking at the fabric admin portal and then we'll look at the data gateways and stuff like that we'll cover those and video three we will try and see how we can manage the analytics development life cycle end to end in the video three video four we will be looking at the data ingestion into the lake house or warehouse and we'll look at the use case 
and then we will try and transform the data and implement a star schema with type 1 and type 2 SCD. In video 6, we will look at the performance optimization, how we can improve the performance end to end. In video 7, we will try and design and build a semantic model with dynamic role level security and object level security, which is very important. And then we will look at optimizing the semantic model in video 8 and video 9 we will do some exploratory analytics and then we will also try and query the data using SQL as well. In video 10 it's a bonus video we will look at the DP600 exam preparation tips and then finally we'll wrap up the course. And here you can see the Google Classroom invite link but I will be sharing the link in the description as well so that you can raise a request and join the community and access the resources right away. Let's quickly look at some of the foundational concepts in fabric architecture. So the first one would be one lake. And what is one lake in fabric architecture? So the image below I've just shown the fabric architecture with one lake as the foundation for all the analytical engines and each experience. In fabric we call it as experience that is built on top of one lake itself. So the experiences are like data factory, Synapse data engineering, Synapse data science, data warehouse, real-time analytics, Power BI. All of the experiences can access the data uh, from OnLake itself. So it's, it's a single point, logical single storage point for organization wherein you can talk to OnLake and um, pull the data out as well. So all of the fabric experiences use one lake as their native store data store without needing any additional configuration. So one lake is hierarchical in nature to simplify management across your organization. So and also uh, to make a note, there is only one one lake per tenant and it provides a single pane of glass file system namespace that spans across users, regions and even clouds as well. And the data in one lake is divided into manageable containers for easy handling as well. So this is very important for you to understand what is one lake in fabric architecture and that's the foundational concept. Um, it's, it's, you can think of it as a one drive for organization as well. Okay, let's try and understand some of the fabric concepts which is very important for you to understand. So like uh, tenant capacities. So those are some of the concepts you need to know before we get started with the course. So let's jump in. So what is a tenant? A fabric tenant, it's a dedicated space for organizations to create, store and even manage your fabric items. There is often a single instance of fabric for an organization and it's aligned with the Microsoft Intro ID. Previously it was Azure AD and the fabric tenant maps to the root of one lake and is at the top level of the hierarchy. So you should know what tenant is to start with and it's 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 maps to the root of one lake and it's at the top level of the hierarchy in the fabric architecture and let's talk about capacity what is capacity it's a you can imagine it as a dedicated set of resources that is available at any given time to be used a tenant can have more than one capacity associated with it and capacity defines the ability of a resource to perform an activity or to produce output. So you can think of it as a computer set of resources required to perform the job. And different items consume different capacity at a certain time. So fabric offers capacity through the fabric SKU and trials, which we'll be looking at it in the next video uh, when we are uh, into planning and implementing and then managing the DA environment. So there we will look at some of the SKUs that are available in Fabric to gain more understanding into the capacities. Okay, but right now you should know what capacity is and the other um, foundational concepts you can say. And what is a domain? A domain is a logical grouping of workspaces. A domain domains are used to organize items in a way that makes sense for your organization. And basically, you can group things together in a way that makes it easier for the right people to have access to the right workspaces. So imagine, for example, you might have a domain for sales uh, and another domain for marketing team and another for finance. In that way, you can group all of the required artifacts in that domain and it will be easy to organize and manage as well. And let's talk about workspace. 
workspace is a collection of items that brings together different functionality in a single tenant. So it, it acts as a container for you that leverages capacity for the work that is executed, provides controls for who can access the items, fabric items in the workspace itself. For example, in a sales workspace, the user associated with the sales organization can create, uh, let's say, lake houses, data warehouses, they can run the notebooks, they can create semantic models and reports, etc. So all of those uh, would be stored in a logical container uh, for the sales workspace itself. And fabric items at the lower level are the building blocks of the fabric platform itself. They are the objects that you create and manage in fabric like lake houses, data warehouses, notebooks, semantic models, be it. There are different types of items, as I mentioned, warehouses, data warehouses, lake houses, data pipelines, semantic models, reports, and dashboards. And as I already mentioned, understanding these fabric concepts is important for you as a fabric admin because it helps you understand how you can manage the fabric environment itself. So be very sure about each of these concepts like tenant capacity, domain, workspace, and the fabric items. And it will be easier for you when you start creating and playing around with the objects in the fabric. And we'll look at it uh, in the upcoming videos in detail. And let's quickly look at the overview of uh, the COVID-19 data set from ECDC, European Center for Disease Prevention and Control. So the latest available public data on geographical distribution of COVID-19 cases worldwide from, as I mentioned, the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control. So each row and entry contains a number of new cases reported per day and per country or region. So we'll quickly look at the preview of the data set shortly. Okay, let's quickly look at the, the sample data set or the Azure open data set that we'll be using across the course in the 10 part video series. And the idea here is to try and demonstrate as much as I can to uh, explain the concepts that we learned with the real world data set. No, without that, you'll not be able to grasp the concepts, I would say. so. The idea in this course is to provide you with the, uh, the required information and then demonstrate with the real world data set, which is the COVID-19 data set. So let's quickly look at the data set itself. So I can share the link. I will also post the link in the Google Classroom community. You can um, look at the data set and download it yourself if you want to follow along as well. So this is the latest available public data, as I mentioned. So um, it's the geographical distribution of the COVID-19 cases worldwide. OK, and each row and entry contains number of new cases reported and deaths reported per day per at the country level or region level itself. So let's quickly look at some of the samples here. Um, I think, yeah, if you download this data set at the moment, I think, you know, it's not 19,876 rows, you might get more than that. But as of May 28, 2020, it contained 19,876 records. Okay, but now it could be more um, with the data uh, for the rest of the months in 2020 as well. And let's look at the samples. So some of the columns, as you can see here, you will have the cases, number of reported cases, and uh, the continent, name, countries and territories, country territory code, reporting date, day of the month, number of deaths reported, geographical ID, ISO country load date, month and year. And it's a very simple data set. And I think it's sufficient for us to demonstrate the concepts that we'll be learning shortly in Fabric Portal. So look at the preview of the data. So you can see some of the samples here, date reported, and then it splits day, month, and year um, into three different columns. And then we have the cases reported in, let's say, Afghanistan, number of deaths that day. And we have some attributes like GOID, country, territory, code, continent, and when it was loaded, ISO country. So it's a very simple data set and I think it's sufficient for us to move forward.
and we just now looked at the the Azure Open data set for COVID-19 cases worldwide and we will be playing around with this data set uh, during the course of this course and I've also pasted the original source to give them the credit for the data set uh, uh, have the link here you can have a look at the original source for this uh, data set as well the original source is from ECDZ as I already highlighted credit goes to them um, European Center for Disease Prevention and Control and when the data was published and you can look at the data there as well let's quickly look at the original source as well so it takes you to the ECDZ website itself it's an agency of the European Union and you can see the historical data can be downloaded uh, which has the daily number of reported COVID-19 cases and deaths worldwide here we are um, I've created a separate classroom DP600 fabric analytics engineer classroom in Google classroom community and here you can uh, look at the study guide and all of the required resources I'll be posting it here so under the classwork so course under DP600 course materials you can see the ECDC COVID-19 public data set uh, link available you can go and download the data set you want to follow along from there and DP600 official course study guide also I have pasted the link here and you can and to gain access to this classroom you need to raise a request so I'll uh, provide the link for the classroom community in the description you can raise a request and you can join and let's begin this journey to learn more about fabric and that's it for this video we quickly looked at the introduction to Microsoft fabric and we looked at the roadmap and course structure and how we are planning this entire course in a 10 part video series and what would be the sample data set that we'll be using throughout the course which which is uh, Azure open data set COVID-19 data set from ECDC uh, we looked at the sample data it's a very simple data set that will be taking into consideration during the course uh, in this 10 part video series thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video